And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Thursday, October 5th, 2023. If you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. It brings you to the National Weather Service's online presence. You'll see a map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left and tabs here for uh, the territories. And if you point and click anywhere on this map, it'll pull up a forecast for that location along with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories. A quick check of the map this Thursday afternoon shows critical fire weather conditions, red flag uh, warnings out for areas of the deep south, uh, southern Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And then back up here in, behind a cold front, we see freeze watches and freeze warnings. If you recall, uh, through much of the, the portion of this past week, we've had temperatures in the 80s to near 90 degrees here across areas of the Midwest. Further west, still some hot temperatures. Uh, we have heat advisories for parts of Southern California going into the weekend where temperatures will reach the 90s to even around 100 degrees. Here in Alaska, though, we're in the other state of affairs. State of Alaska winter weather preparedness week already. Some of you have experienced early season snowfall and winter weather, and that will be increasing in the days and weeks ahead. So good time now to see, make sure your home is winterized, that you have your vehicles, snow machines, any power tools and equipment uh, you've taken care of, have some extra parts around, make sure they're in good working order, have extra medical supplies and food on hand because at times uh, the winter weather here in Alaska can be pretty rough and there can be delays in uh, getting resupplied. Well, strong winds are occurring on the backside of low along the coastal areas of the Yukon Delta and St. Lawrence Island. Winds out of the north, northeast gusting at times up over 35 to near 50 miles an hour. More accumulating snow will be developing across parts of the interior tonight and on Friday morning. And a quick check back on September 2023. It was the second wettest September for Juneau and Haines and the third wettest at Sitka. Looking at a couple of the FAA webcams this Thursday early afternoon, the Koryuk there on the north side of Nunavik Island. Cloudy, breezy conditions, winds out of the north, northeast. You can see the surf, the elevated surf there, temperature at 37 degrees. Yakutat, seen periods of heavier rain at least this morning, early afternoon. Some fog, 48 degrees. Those heavier rains will be shifting a little southeastward in the northern part of the uh, panhandle. And uh, as the front continues to push farther north, we expect snow to be breaking out across areas of the Copper River Basin, the um, intercoastal mountains, including the Wrangell St. Elias. But there is a winter weather advisory for the eastern Alaska range for uh, tonight into Friday early afternoon. Uh, as much as six inches of snow could fall through some of the passes and higher elevations, especially like a, say, Isabel Pass. And as uh, snow sets up, there's going to be a band that just kind of sets up here near Fairbanks and uh, down through Toke uh, Northway, maybe one to as much as three inches in the lower elevations, but nevertheless, some early season snowfall. And then on the backside, low pressure that's sitting now just near north of Cold Bay. We have strong northeast to north winds creating elevated surf along areas here of the lower Yukon uh, coast and St. Lawrence Island. And as a reminder, uh, know the difference uh, between winter weather watches, warnings, and advisories. We'll start out with a winter storm watch. A winter storm watch is, hey, a heads up. We have some winter weather heading your way that could be impactful. Be aware of it. A winter weather, a, a winter storm watch is typically issued a day or two in advance, sometimes as many as three if it's really uh, well advertised. And then a winter storm warning is issued uh, if you're, we're expecting significant impacts from winter weather that could be a threat to life or property. And a winter storm, is either occurring or imminent, and you should take necessary measures. Uh, it's best to delay travel if possible until conditions improve. And again, sometimes with these storms, travel may become impossible. Now with a winter weather advisory, we're expecting some hazardous winter weather, not quite as severe as a warning, but nevertheless, it's important that you be cautious 
because it still could be some threats to life and property if you don't pay attention. But usually an advisory is not, it's not as significant of the impacts and the type of weather that are associated with warning. Nevertheless, remember a watch is a heads up, watch out, it's coming. An advisory means it's happening and expected and could have impacts. But a warning is a more serious situation where we expect widespread uh, impacts that could threaten life and property. And it's important to take necessary measures uh, to be safe. So looking at satellite imagery this afternoon, we've had a, quite a push of moisture and energy right coming along the Gulf associated with a front that trails back to a low situated just north of Cold Bay and Sand Point here in the lower side uh, of the, the peninsula and on the Bering side. Uh, here across the west, there have been some brisk north-northeasterly winds across the Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound, the coastal areas of uh, the Yukon coastline, as well as up there at St. Lawrence Island. Now, by this is the way the map looks right now. Here we have a low, not especially deep for this time of year, but it's there. Here's the frontal system lifting northward. And by late tonight, early Friday morning, uh, that moisture will travel farther inland across the Copper River Basin, Alaska Range. And that's going to all be snow and accumulating snow. So if you're traveling here in the uh, inner road system, just be aware that some of the areas going through the mountains and the higher elevations there will be, roads could be snow covered and slippery. We expect that snow to continue, especially along in North Alaska Range uh, Friday morning and early afternoon with some definitely light accumulations, Fairbanks down through, uh, say, uh, Toke and Northway and also perhaps Glen Allen and taking the roundup that way. Uh, but otherwise, uh, rain's still continuing, maybe not as heavy across the panhandle. That front already working its way in and weakening. By the weekend, another low is going to lift out of the Gulf, pull back northwestward along the uh, panhandle in northeastern Gulf Coast, bringing another round of uh, moderate rain to the panhandle and breezy conditions as well. That will likely pull more snow back across areas of the southeast interior, Wrangell, St. Elias Mountains along the Alcan border and eastern Alaska range. So stay tuned there for those areas as we get into later Saturday and Sunday. And overall, just a pretty solid fall pattern in place. No real warm air temperatures, warmest temperatures will be here along areas of the southern panhandle. Could flirt with 60 degrees, but otherwise pretty chilly here across the interior and in the back through the west side of the state. Best chance of seeing sunshine downslope here of the Brooks Range, Seward Peninsula. You'll be in a better position there to see sun, though breezy and cold conditions. Temperatures tonight, 40s to near 50 along the panhandle for lows. 30s, but above freezing most areas, except for maybe up toward Glen Allen as you get up toward the northern Copper River Basin. Highs on Friday, 50s, maybe near 60 at Craig and Klawak. Areas to the west, maybe a little of, right around or a little above 50 in, in uh, the Anchorage Bowl and certainly around the Kenai Peninsula. Low Saturday morning, most areas here above freezing, certainly 40s to lower 50s across the Panhandle and daytime highs. Again, in the 50s across the Panhandle with more rain, near 60 there in, in the southwest uh, corner. Otherwise, back here, still near 50 degrees around the Anchorage Bowl, Kenai Peninsula. And temperatures, coldest will be up along the Brooks Range. Single digits above, even maybe a little below zero if there is any clearing here up there toward Arctic Village, some of the smaller uh, places there. Otherwise, along the Arctic Coast, we're seeing some teens there, uh, Kaktovik, uh, Back toward the Seward Peninsula, 20s to just below freezing. So generally everybody uh, below freezing now. Daytime highs will generally be at or below freezing with the exception along the Seward coastline, uh, lower Yukon Basin, and uh, perhaps just making it with a little downslope in some spots could uh, see readings still near 40 uh, as you get on and over toward uh, Toke, but otherwise, Temperatures are going to be pretty chilly again Saturday morning, single digits down near zero along the Brooks Range. And daytime highs generally below freezing uh, north of the Yukon River and a little above freezing south of the Yukon River. And looking at the southwest interior lows tonight, generally above freezing most areas, 40s along the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. Warmest temperatures Friday afternoon toward Kodiak Island as you go up Cook Inlet, some areas there still lower, maybe mid-50s. But back to the west, 
highs only in the mid 30s or so there across the lower Yukon and Kuskokwim River basins, 40s along the Alaska Peninsula and in through the eastern Aleutians. Saturday morning, not much temperature variation between night and day here along the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula and then daytime. Highs will be confined again to the mid-upper 30s here across the southwest interior, 40-ish around uh, Dillingham, King Salmon, still 52 Kodiak City, but then 40s as we trail out along the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians. And here's the temperature outlook going into mid-month from October 11th through the 15th. Temperatures are expected to average below normal across much of the mainland with the greatest likelihood here over the southwest, including Bethel, Dillingham, Kodiak, back through Sand Point. Maybe a little above normal here over uh, parts of the panhandle simply because the storm track will be such that as systems pull up this way, you're going to see southerly, southeasterly flow of milder wet air coming up into this region. And as far as precipitation, the backside, you're going to have a drier north, northeasterly flow over the southwest. So precipitation will likely average below normal in this time frame, October 11th through the 15th, maybe a little above normal along the Arctic coast from Utyavik over on toward Kaktovik and through parts of the Panhandle.